God for protecting and preserving all of us to be able to see this day and to pray to him to continue to protect and preserve us so that on 7th December we can exercise our franchise and vote to change the trajectory of our country Ghana and make the lives of our people better. On this occasion, I'd like to thank all our supporters, our sympathizers, our foot soldiers, our activists for the strong work that you do to keep our party strong and vibrant. On this occasion, I remember one of our foot soldiers called Wasiu. Wasiu would have been here with us. We call him popularly Aponche. For those of you who are in Asin North, he is the one who, when there was pressure, he took a cement block and raised it and fought for NDC. Today he's not with us. May Allah grant him peaceful rest. Ghana is at an important juncture in its history. And the decision that we make on 7th December is going to reflect on the future of this country. A member of the New Patriotic Party, a friend of mine and a former colleague MP, said, he said, it's not Ghana that needs change. He says, it's change that needs Ghana. Change is calling Ghana, and that's Kennedy, Honorable Kennedy of Japan. Change needs Ghana because in the last Afrobarometer survey, more than 80% of Ghanaians said that our country is going in the wrong direction. And if you are going in the wrong direction, if you are walking or you are driving, and you are going in the wrong direction, what do you do? You change your course. And that is why on 7th December, Ghana must change course. We cannot solve the crisis in which we are with the same people who caused the crisis in the first place. Several years ago, somebody came and said, try me. Monsa Menshe, the result is what we are seeing today. Today, another person has come. And he's also saying, try me. And he's saying the same things the one who has helped to put us in this ditch was saying eight years ago. And what they say is that, if after four years I don't do well, change me. The youth of this country don't have four years to waste. The youth of this country are in a hurry to create the opportunities that will make them live a dignified life. They are not going to try somebody and after four years decide whether you should continue. The youth of this country want an experienced hand. They want a safe pair of hands. They want a hand that they have seen do it before to come back and take this country and rescue us from the mess in which we have been dumped by the Akufado Baumia government. My brothers and sisters, it is not going to be easy. The more I look at the figures, the more I look at our situation, it is even worse than what this government is telling us. It's going to take a lot of hard work. And as has been said, one person alone cannot do it. We would need the cooperation of the whole country to be able to lift Ghana back on its feet again. 
I've been out of government for almost eight years now. I did my best. I wouldn't say things were perfect, but at least we're making progress. What I can promise you is that I will be truthful to you. I will never tell you lies. I will never tell you things that I can't do. The, pro the problem with this country is that our policies are based on the short cycle of winning elections every four years. And we're not creating the foundation for this economy to take off. And so we're not making you promises. I'm promising you that I'll work hard day and night to make sure that we reset the fortunes of this country. Four years of a good leader will make more impact than eight years of a dishonest leader. It is not about how long you serve. It is about how well you serve. It's not about eight years or four years. It is about hard work. It is about truth. It is about trust. And it is about doing the things that will create a future for our young people. And that is why the NDC is calling on you on 7th December to do your duty to your God and country so that we can turn this nation around. This government is living in an illusion. They are living in a dream world. They are living in a fantasy world. Because if you are not living in an illusion, when people are hungry, how can you tell them they are satisfied? Puma and Denenyale. And the Nyale, Kakum Malma, Kakanti Yelmana, and Teria. Then, we can feel the, the pangs, pangs of hunger. And yet, this government tells us we are satisfied. And that never in Akufado's government have people gone hungry. Meanwhile, the statistics clearly show that 8 million of our citizens last year in 2023 went 24 hours without food because they couldn't afford to buy food. Meanwhile, the statistics tell us that almost 2 million of our young people are sitting at home. They are not in school. They are not in education. They are not in training. And they are not in employment. They are just sitting at home idle. And most of them are still living in their parents' houses because they don't have an income to be able to start a life of their own. The statistics tell us that if, uh, uh, unemployment has risen from just above 8% in 2016 to 14.7%. And yet, they say things have never been this better. And they have the audacity to compare themselves to our first president, Osaju for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. How can you compare this useless government that has led Ghana into such crisis to the government of Kwame Nkrumah? The statistics again tell us that things are not well with this country. All the statistics. For a government that said it was going to come with an economic wizard, an economic guru, and that is the reason why he was being brought to stabilize the economy and stabilize the currency. To take the CD from four CDs to 16 CDs and tell us that, clap for us, we've done well. If such a government is not living in an illusion, what else is an illusion? For a government that has taken inflation 
as far as 54%, and it is currently still above 20%, to tell us that we should clap for them because they've done well. If they are not living in an illusion, then I don't know what an illusion is. But that is the beauty of democracy. It gives us the opportunity every four years to make a change. And the time has come for us to make that change. The time has come for us to reset Ghana. And I believe that four years is enough to do the reset of Ghana. We will reset this country so that future generations can come and build on that foundation. Our intention is to ameliorate the damage that has been done. We all saw what happened in the banking sector clean-out. The indigenous capital of Ghanaians in our banking sector was wiped away with one very reckless decision. And so today, most of our people who are working in the banking sector for these banks are today unemployed, and I'm sure there are some of them here. Today, some of them are Uber drivers, some are bakers, some are even uh, driving Aboboya and Mahama Kambu. The time has come for us to make a change. And I've said when we come, we will restore for those who unjustifiably had their banking licenses withdrawn, we shall restore their licenses to them. So that we can create more employment for our people. The debt restructuring has given people haircuts, and that's what Nana was talking about. Today, the savings of our middle class has been eroded because of the debt restructuring. Our pensioners, and I'm sure there are some of the pensioners here, your provident fund that you used to buy bonds and other things in order that when you go on pension, you'll be able to buy your medication and be able to look after yourself. Today, this government has endangered your future. Many might not live long because they cannot, get, they cannot afford to buy medicines. And this government does not deserve one day longer. But our constitution says they still have five months to go. But come December, we must take the decision that will change the trajectory of our country. The world is waiting for a signal. Ghana is waiting for a signal. Investors are all holding on because they want to see what will happen in Ghana. We must take a decision on 7 December that shows the world that we are serious people. And that we know that our country needs a turn around. And so 7 December, let us all make sure we come out in our numbers and we vote so that we move this government out. Let us not lose hope. Let us have hope. Because I can assure you that the next NDC government is a government that will restore hope and create opportunities for our young people. NDC has the men and the women. And it's not like what the MPP said, we have the men. And we didn't know they were area boys. NDC has capable men and women who are capable of turning our fortunes around. And our first priority is going to be job creation. So that we can create jobs for the teeming youth of this country. And that is why I'm proposing the 24-hour economic policy. The policy is going to be linked with aggressive food production and modernization of our agriculture. And that's why I'm saying in every district we're going to create farmer service centers. We will bring the tractors, the planters, the plows, the seeds, the fertilizer. And if you're a farmer, you must register with the center. And at the beginning of the farming season, we'll give you all the inputs that you need so that you can produce your crops. And when you have sold your crops, you come back and pay for the inputs that you have been given. 
the 24 hour economy is going to be linked to an accelerated export development program. We are going to create agro processing zones and we're going to create a new class of agri, agri business people. And so all you young people will be encouraged to go into agro processing. You can buy the food off the farmers, you can process it, package it nicely, either for domestic consumption or for export. And there's going to be an accelerated uh, uh, export development program of which I, the president, will be the chairman to make sure that we increase the exports of Ghana. Ghana has the human resources to turn our nation around. Ghanaians are capable. Ghanaians are capable. They need the right leadership. They need a selfless leadership. And that is why I'm saying that governance is going to be a key platform of the new government. One of the things we will continue is the work Professor Tamil started of reviewing the 1992 constitution and amending it so that it will be a living document that guides our country into the future. We will continue the constitutional review to amend the various sectors that are holding us back. We know that the vast majority of our people want our district chief executives to be elected so that they can hold them accountable. We will look at the work the Constitutional Review Committee did, and I think that in four years we can forge the consensus that will amend the Constitution and make it a better document for us. Another aspect of governance will be to strengthen the institutions. We are going to work with the judiciary. We are going to work with Parliament so that we can strengthen these institutions in order that they can be the bulwark of our democracy. But of course, the most important issue in governance is the fight against corruption and accountability. If you don't want to be accountable, go and do your own business. Whatever you do in your business, nobody is coming to hold you to account because it is your own investment. But if you decide that you want to come into public service, then prepared, be prepared to be held accountable. And so I've said it and I'll say it again, for those people who have been involved in scandals and various acts of misappropriation in this government, this MPP government, we shall investigate you and we will let the law take its course. We will hold everybody to account. And if you have abused your public trust, the people of Ghana will exact the uh, sanction that is required. But I serve notice too that our country is at a pivotal point. This is our last opportunity to save our democracy. Our youth have lost faith in our democracy. If you read the Afrobarometer survey, you'll find that trust in democracy is at its lowest in our history. And this is our last opportunity to salvage our democracy. So it is not going to be business as usual. For those who wish to serve in the new administration, know that you're coming to serve in an administration of modesty. You are coming to serve in an administration of honesty. You are coming to serve in an administration of hard work. And you are coming to serve in an administration of accountability. And so as we hold the previous government accountable for wrongdoings, if you serve in the John Mahama government, the next John Mahama government, if you are accused of wrongdoing, you will also be punished and held accountable. Because it is going to be as they say in the Akan language, Aba Yadibo Techino, Enwa En Yadibo Bang. And so if you want to serve in this administration, you must be prepared. 
to be accountable. They are, uh, we are going to launch our manifesto next month in August, before the end of August. And we're launching it in Central Region. So Central Region, when you go back, start preparing. We're coming to launch the manifesto. And when we launch the manifesto, there are a lot of interesting things there. We will spell out the blueprint that we intend to pursue to change the fortunes of our country. But let me just mention a few, and I think now not dead. Our women are the majority of our population. And our women dominate the commerce, trade, agriculture, agro-processing uh, uh, sectors of our economy. And yet sometimes, our mothers and our sisters need just a thousand Ghana cities to be able to use as capital for their business, and they are not able to get it. And that is why, as Nana said, we're going to set up a National Women's Bank. It is going to have its branches in the markets, in all the places that women do business. Your bank, your women's bank is going to be there. And it will be responsible for giving you small credit so that you can grow your businesses and be able to look after uh, your families. We know, we know that, that it is the mothers and the sisters and the women who, when they get a little money, they take it home and look after our children. And so if we empower the women, we are empowering ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, we are going to improve the free SHS. We are going to improve the free SHS. We are going to work hard to remove the obnoxious double track system. So that all our children can go to school at the same time and close from school at the same time. We don't want a situation where our children come home and stay home for four months before they go back to school. And so we're going to improve the free SHS. We're going to sit with the teachers and the parents and all the stakeholders. And together, we will forge an implementation plan that will make the free SHS better. We're going to improve health care. And in our 2020 manifesto, we talked about the introduction of primary health care. When the manifesto is put out, you'll see the provisions that are there for primary health care. We're going to uncap the NHIS. Currently, this government has capped the NHIS and is taking some of the NHIS money into the consolidated fund. And that is why when you go with your NHIS card, the hospitals are, uh, are reluctant to serve you because they don't refund the claims that they make. So we'll uncap the NHIS so that when you go, you can get good, affordable treatment at our health facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, We'll continue to remove schools under trees. Professor Mills started that program, and we provided good school environment for uh, uh, hundreds of thousands of children. We're going to continue the removal of schools under trees and uh, uh, improve our basic education. For tertiary students, we're going to take a part of your university land. We will sit with your universities, they'll carve out a portion of your land and we're going to work with the private sector to build student hostels so that you will live on campus and not live elsewhere and suffer the danger of traveling to and from home to school. We want our tertiary students to live on campus so that they can stay on campus and learn. There are several instances where students leaving the university and going for accommodation outside the university have either been knocked down by vehicles, attacked by armed robbers, or have found themselves in danger. There are many, many things that we intend to do, but let me just address, finally, our party. Ladies and gentlemen, this is an election like no other. And if you say you are NDC, then you better get prepared. Everybody is going to volunteer. We're not going to sleep for 48 hours until all the ballots have been counted.
none of us is going to sleep for 48 hours until all the ballots have been counted. And I wish to assure all the people of Ghana who intend to vote for the NDC, I can promise you that we will protect every single vote. We have had our issues with the Electoral Commission, but we are prepared to give them the benefit of the doubt. And at the same time, we also must use the instruments that the electoral process affords us to be able to make sure that we police the poll. And that is why we are calling those of you who want to volunteer. Everybody is going to be a party agent on that day. Even if you are not selected as one of the two party agents, you are going to be there to make sure that the right thing is done. The Electoral Commission regulations say that at the end of counting, when the pink sheet has been filled, the pink sheet must be pasted on the wall of the polling station. Listen to me carefully. You must all insist that the returning officer must place one copy of the pink sheet on the wall of the polling station. When he has done that, please take your mobile phone and take a picture of the pink sheet so that tomorrow when somebody changes the pink sheet, we will know that it is a fake pink sheet. Amabia. PDP Moti MP Ngo. Debela Yamanle Ne Jiri Sunsuni. Ambine Teza Borla Yamanle. Then you go 7 December to the Chanty P into NDC. Now Ikone, Inshallah, NDC Tindi Nasara. Kuria and the Zamuje for 7 December. Yena Sakani, Gaskia, the Karia, Nasa Muduka, Nasong Gaskia, Sabode, Idan Kazama, Christian Kazama Musulmi, Koran, the Bible Duka, Nanuma Munakaman, Abinda Mui Duka, Mudochi Gaskia Mui Aiki. Don't she now say 7 December, Kuria and the Zamuje Fanga, Zamuje Fana Gaskiani. Zamu Jefa na NDC. Na seni inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. NDC zata chi nasara. A chicken zabi zabi in the Zamu Yinga. Bini anomu. Abatu ayebe tui. Ejina nukre. Ene entro. Yebe yi. Se no crenye and tronye and no home about on your battle. Now, meaning, sir, a sumbia or bia sumbia, se Bible or se Korana, Ning Natre, I say, Emrebia, Yemfa, no cre, Emfanye Juma. Now, meaning, sir, Yamia Dauma, Yamia Daumanti, seven December, Batua, I bet you, Yamia Dominti, and this bedding could him, and what battle. Oshikini Wabafo, seven December. A year Anokwale Ke Amale Te. The warfare was one Anokwale Ke Christo for Jibo Ke Muslim Jibo. Warfare. Bible ke Quran cho cho wa ke wa ke anukale achu e wo nle ake nyumo dromo he wo 7 December NDC ba ye nkuni ye tiki emi ngba nyu fa metu bi ke ke Kongo we ankaya antoere. Kele kashinteng ne efe bu Kongo na yanto. Angi kenyifene afu le kakramo.
Go for your church. And your Bible, the Quran, being in your phone. Sankma anta kasitensho. I'm so in your phone. Inshallah, Inshallah. Seven December, Congo we are coming and touring. NDC, Benji Nasara Kumoto. Nobino. Medog Minami Kata. Mauna Irami. Thank you very much. I want to thank the organizers for this good choreography. I also want to thank our traditional leaders who came here to represent the Yana. May God bless you for coming to join us. I want to thank everybody who took time to come here. May God take all of us safely back home. Once we launch this campaign, we are not going to sit. We're going to go from market to market. We're going to go from uh, Trotro station to Trotro station. We're going to go from house to house. We're going to go from shop to shop. Don't wait till the campaign teams come before you come and follow our convoy. Even when we are not there, you must be working. And so on this occasion, we want you all to go home safely. On this occasion, as the leader and flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, I declare the campaign, NDC campaign, for 2024 election duly launched. Thank you very much. I can't